morning. Thank you for joining Hiding Behind the Lipstick 3.0 Ministries. I am so glad to be with you this morning, this rainy morning. But I wanted to talk with you about a subject that has been getting a lot of attention lately. And I just want to empower us and to make us aware of what is happening with the children. And the title of this episode is Saving the Children. And the data that I am using comes from stopbullying.gov. And yes, we are talking about bullying on today. We know that bullying has a serious and adverse effect on the victims that, is, that are being bullied. But however, the victims of bullying can have, de they can have depression or anxiety from being bullied. Bullies often uh, continue with violent behavior once they start at a young age bullying. This, be this behavior heightens to criminal background, criminal behavior rather. This may be an unknown fact, but over 70% of students report that bullying is a problem at their school. Also, about one out of 10 middle school children drop out of or change schools due to bullying. This is a problem. This is a very serious problem. Bullying is unwanted, aggressive behavior among school-age children that involves a real or perceived power imbalance. Now, what is this? What is an imbalance of power? Kids that bully others use their power, be it physical strength or access to embarrassing information or their popularity to control or even harm other students. When bullying becomes repetitious, it is very frightful for the child that is being bullied. Bullying includes actions such as making threats, spreading rumors, attacking someone verbally or physically, and even when a child is excluded from a group, deliberate and on purpose, this act also is called bullying. There are three types of bullying, verbal, social, and physical. But first I wanna to talk to us about the verbal kind, the verbal bullying. Now verbal happens when the bully say, says or write mean things about the victim that is the target of his bullying. Teasing, name calling, inappropriate sexual comments, Taunting and threatening to cause harm are all violent bullying tactics. Now, second is social bullying. This oftentimes involves hurting someone's reputation or relationship. Social bullying includes leaving someone out on purpose. We said that a minute ago. See, you see the, the tactics. Telling other children not to be friends with someone and then spreading rumors about the person. Embarrassing the victim in public. Social bullying. And thirdly comes the physical type of bullying, which involves hurting a person's body or their possessions. This type of bullying, their victim is hitting, kicking, pinching, spitting, tripping, pushing, taking on, uh, taking or breaking the victim's belongings, making mean or rude hand gestures. These are all types of physical bullying. You know, we see it on television and we think it's funny when the kid puts the child in the locker or if they stick their foot out and trip them or something. It's really not funny and it's really detrimental to the child that is the victim of this bullying. So I want the parents to please know when this is occurring to with your child, it is most difficult for them to function normally for the fact of fear and danger is ever present. They can't be normal because they're afraid. They are simply afraid. Bullying can and do occur during or after school hours. Some have been reported to have happened on the playground or even on the bus. According to the National Center for Education, it indicates that the nation that nationwide about 21% of students ages 12 to 18 experience bullying. 
In 2017, the same group reported that 19% of students in grades 9 through 12 report being bullied on school property in this 12 months preceding this survey that they were doing. There is another kind of bullying known as cyberbullying. This form of bullying takes place over digital devices such as cell phones, computers, and tablets. Cyberbullying can occur through SMS, text, and apps, or even online in social media forums or gaming rooms where people can view and participate in or share content. There are so many ways for the cyberbullying to take place. Cyberbullying includes sending postings, sending postings, sharing negative, harmful, false, or mean information about the intended target of the bullying. Parents, hear me, okay? Please be aware that cyberbullying can cross the line into unlawful and or criminal behavior. In the most common places for cyberbullying is social media such as Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and there may be even more that we as parents are unaware of. So do your research, parents. Text messaging is also known as SMS, which means short message service. Instant message is email, apps, and social media messaging features. So there are apps that kids can download to their phones that will make them be able and easy accessible to bullying another child. And email is another way for cyberbullying to happen. Please know that cyberbullying bullying is persistent and it will allow the victim to finally, it will not allow the victim rather to find any relief from this form of bullying because if they're at school, they're being bullied. If they're at home, they're being bullied online. So there, there's no way of escaping this. This is for cyberbullying is also, it is permanent. Once it goes into the cyber world, it's there. Unless someone deletes it or takes it down, it's there. Now the information that is communicated electronic, it is permanent and it is public and it is and if it's not reported then it can't be removed now a negative online reputation is for the ones that are bullying can impact their college admissions it can later on impact your employment and other areas of your life please parents teachers family and friends pay attention and be aware of what may or could be happening to our children. Because it can be hard to notice if the teacher or the parent don't overhear or see the cyberbullying take place, it can be hard to recognize that the child is going through this. Therefore, there needs to be a strong and open line of communication with your child or your children. It's vital that you find out what's going on right here i want you to sh i want to share with you some of the warning signs of a child that may be bullied and a child that may be being may be the bully because both of them are at risk signs of a child being bullied unexplained or unexplainable injuries lost or destroyed clothing their books, electronics, or jewelry, those things are missing or they've been destroyed. Frequent headaches or stomach aches, feeling sick or faking illness to keep from having to go to school. Changes in eating habits, skipping meals or binge eating, difficulty sleeping and having frequent nightmares. Their grades are declining. They have no, they've lost interest in school, in the school work. Simply just not wanting to go to school at all. A sudden loss of friends or avoidance of social situations. Feeling of helplessness. Decrease in their self-esteem. Yeah. 
self-destructive behavior such as running away from home, harming themselves, and talking about suicide. Now, those were the signs of a child that's being bullied. Let's look at the signs of a child that's actually doing the bullying. Getting into physical or verbal fights. Have friends that are bullies increasingly being aggressive. Get sent to the principal's office or detention frequently. Have unexplained extra money or new belongings that you didn't buy for them. Blame others for their problems. Don't accept responsibility for their actions. Are competitive and worry about their reputation or popularity. And we wonder why it is that kids don't ask for help. The bully or the bullier. The bully e rather. They don't ask for help. We wonder why. Why don't they just say something? Well, I want you to know right here that it's fear that keeps them from saying something. Fear of retaliation once it comes out. Fear on every sign. But statistics from 2012 indicators of school crime and safety shows that an adult was notified in less than half, which is 40% of bullying incidents. They just don't tell for various reasons. Number one, like I said, they fear the backlash from the bully. It's humiliating to know, to let someone know that this is happening to them. They often already feel socially isolated. They feel they will be rejected by their peers. But now if you suspect that your child is being bullied, you need to take it very seriously and encourage them to talk about it. All the while, I need you to remain calm, be supportive, and assure your child that they are not to blame for them being a victim. You must make your child feel safe and secure so that they will know that they can talk to you about it. Encourage the child to stay with a teacher or other students to that, so that the bully has less opportunity to engage in this negative behavior. Parents, make the school aware of this problem. And I want you to know that you need to make it aware over and over and over again that this is happening. Stay in touch with the school to help alleviate the bullying. It is being advised that parents do not contact parents of the bully. Don't call Mr. Jones or threaten to beat Mr. Jones up because he's probably a bully too. It is suggested that the victim engage in activities that can improve their confidence, their self-esteem, and overall emotional strength. This will help to improve social skills. Cognitive behavior therapy is a very effective approach to helping victims of bullying cope with the emotional turmoil that results from being a victim of bullying. If you suspect that your child is the bully, talk to the child about the actions that they are being accused of. Listen to their side of what happened. Hold your child fully and fairly accountable for their actions. Spend more time with the child. Monitor their activities and supervise them appropriately. Again, parents, stay in close contact with the school to monitor any further incidents and encourage your child to engage in positive social activities with positive role models. Remember, this child may also do well to seek some professional help. Remember, 28% of young people from grades 6 through 12 have been the victim of bullying. Bullying can have significant negative outcome for both the bully and the victim. Bystanders of bullying tend to succumb to what they believe is peer pressure. So it is imperative that as parents, we do something to help our children. Until next time, we'll be doing part two. Have a blessed and wonderful day and save the children.